uh, hope you are having a good summit so far. Uh, good evening to you all and uh, a very warm uh, welcome to all the attendees uh, joining this event virtually. Uh, I am Parth Goswami and today I will be uh, trying to highlight some of the uh, open source CNI plugins and their approaches uh, towards IP address management in uh, container networking. Now before I uh, start my talk, uh, I would I wanted to highlight that networking is one of that aspect uh, in, in the container or maybe even cloud computing that is often, uh, often uh, overlooked maybe because of uh, various, uh, uh, maybe it, it can be a bit complex topic to some of uh, some of the folks or they might uh, be scared uh, uh, for, I mean, towards the networking part for uh, various re reasons. So this is one attempt to make it a bit simplified and I'm going to give a very high uh, level overview about the uh, topics and concepts that we, we are going to touch. So the approach that I'm going to follow today is, uh, so the uh, so we are going to talk about adapting open source CNI plugins for IPAM. Uh, we are going to start with understanding in brief what CNI is. Uh, we'll touch uh, the topic about uh, plugins, what exactly plugins are. We'll try to understand what IPAM is and then we'll uh, focus on the need to adapt the open source uh, CNI plugins. All right, so the uh, textbook definition given by uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation about uh, CNI is uh, that it's a, a specification that defines how to configure networking for Linux containers. Now, uh, it does that by providing a set of uh, APIs for networking solutions to integrate with different container runtimes. Um, now, if you uh, take a look at the PIC over here, uh, there is container runtime of your choice, and then the CNI sits on top of it. And within CNI, it ships lots of uh, components called as plugins. Now, what exactly these plugins are? Uh, so before we uh, take a look at plugin, let us uh, try to understand a bit more about what exactly CNI does and uh, how it does whatever it does. So for example, if I need to uh, establish a network within a container, uh, I need to have uh, uh, its own uh, network namespace. So with the so I create a network namespace. Now once I have that, I need to create a bridge between the host network namespace and the container network namespace. Once I have the bridge, I uh, create a couple of uh, virtual Ethernet pairs. Why virtual? Because we are dealing with containers and not like virtual machines or physical hardware. So any Ethernet, any networking component that we will be dealing with is going to be virtual. So we create virtual Ethernet pairs and then we uh, attach one end of it to the networking namespace and attach one end of it to the bridge. And once we have that, uh, we finally assign the IP address to uniquely identify that pod and uh, we bring up the interfaces. And this is how the interface comes up and the pod uh, goes live. So uh, this is a sample uh, kind of uh, algorithm, sample code, sample program to achieve certain steps, to achieve a certain desired result. Now, um, this exact same requirement is there uh, for uh, almost any other container orchestration, uh, RKT, uh, Docker, Mesos, Kubernetes. So why not we kind of create a standardized version of it and then try to uh, ship it with any other, any other orchestration. So the, the very thing of creating a standardized version of it, creating kind of a library of it is called as a uh, plugin. So uh, the so before we, uh, we move on to plugin, uh, let's try to understand that if we want to create our own CNI, what it must do or what are the absolutely most necessary roles that this uh, CNI should perform. So I don't want to bombard you with uh, a whole lot of theory. So I'll just uh, highlight a couple of points from this uh, must have roles. So it must be able to create a network namespace as we just discussed. Then uh, it must be able to identify uh, the network of the container uh, and uh, it, it should be able to deal with the bridge if we are adding container or deleting container then uh, it should deal with one of the output format. Uh, it must support command line arguments uh, so that we are able to fire the commands and interact with it through our uh, CLI. Uh, it must be able to manage the IP addresses, which is the exact topic of this talk. And uh, it must uh, return the results in one of the uh, desired uh, 
output format, JSON, text, tabular, whatever it is. So if, if any CNI is uh, able to do some of these roles or majorly all of these roles, I think that would be a pretty good thing. Next. Uh, so what we have seen so far is the textbook definition provided by CNCF of what CNI is. Um, basically, a plugin is a collection of program or a code. So here you, you see a few examples of uh, plugins such as loopback, bridge, uh, PTP, Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, uh, and then there are many third party plugins as well. So, uh, so examples of uh, third party plugins that, that is being adopted uh, or that has been accepted by Kubernetes is uh, Calico is there, uh, Vivnet is there, Fl uh, Flannel is there, Cilium is there. So just to give you a brief introduction about uh, all this uh, third party plugins. So Calico is a popular CNI tool that deals around network security uh, uh, based on cloud native architecture. And it is mostly used in the enterprise version, enterprise level environments. Uh, uh, flannel is something that is simple uh, and lightweight and very easy to install, but it is mostly uh, preferred for small uh, scale clusters and not something that is uh, larger in size. Uh, then we have WaveNet. Uh, it, it, it is into uh, uh, providing network automation uh, and observability features. Uh, features, And then we have uh, Cilium that is uh, basically uh, based on the identity-based access solutions. So these are all open source uh, uh, CNI plugins. Uh, and uh, since they are not maintained or developed by CNCF itself, they are third party. Now, uh, let's let's try to understand what exactly IPAM is. Now, here I'm not uh, uh, touching IPAM from the Kubernetes or from the continuous point of view. I'm just talking about the simple plain IP address management. So uh, basically it means that uh, if you are uh, doing something which falls under assigning, uh, monitoring, tracking, or managing IPs, uh, you are kind of dealing with IP address management. So it's not that you uh, have a device, either virtual or a physical device, you assign an IP address and you just go about it. No, it's not that. Because at your level, at an individual level, you're dealing with just one device. But at an enterprise level, you are dealing with huge, cl uh, huge clusters. Uh, which might have thousands of nodes, uh, and it's a combination of nodes, virtual node, physical node, etc. So you need to have a proper procedure set, a methodical system, which will define how your assigning of IP address will work, how the tracking of IP address is working, uh, whether the device is, if it is not in function, whether the IP address is being revoked or not, uh, it should not be reused. So all this mechanism needs to be there uh, properly being uh, set and defined. So that is basically what IP address management is. Um, and uh, it is basically an integrated uh, suite of tools. Uh, and it also uh, in, uh, like encompasses the, the uh, concepts of DHCP and DNS. Next, now uh, with respect to Kubernetes, what exactly IPAM is? So Kubernetes also relies on IPAM since Kubernetes uh, mostly works at the cluster level. It needs to uh, manage or deal with thousands and millions of uh, containers, pods, um, and it requires uh, those many IP addresses as well. So there is no option for Kubernetes to skip uh, IP address management. So it needs, it requires IP address management, and it definitely relies on it. Now Kubernetes has its own inbuilt tool to manage IP address, that is QProxy, but definitely that comes with uh, certain limitations. Uh, now before that, in Kubernetes, each pod will require its own IP address, to talk to each other, I mean to talk to other pods, to talk to services, uh, and to talk to external network. Um, so if, if IPs are required for uh, for so and so reasons, uh, then IP need to, the, I, the addresses need to be managed. Uh, QProxy is something that is actually uh, uh, handling the IP address management, but the limitation is it can't scale. So it, it, it works uh, it works fine, it works efficiently to a certain extent. But once you um, cross the uh, cross its threshold, uh, I'm not sure about what the threshold is, but if you cross it and move to a very large uh, complex uh, cluster or maybe a very uh, complex topology of network, then cube proxy seems to uh, uh, not seems to not work efficiently. So that is the main limitation of the current, by default, uh, IPAM plugin that, uh, that Kubernetes uh, 
has. Next, so uh, then there are some uh, challenges presented by IP exhaustion. So basically what IP exhaustion is, um, back in 1980s when we came up with this concept of IPv4, it was divided, I mean it is divided into four blocks of uh, eight bits each, 32 bit. Uh, so back then everybody thought that this many millions of IP addresses or billions of IP addresses would be enough. But then within 10 to 15 years, by late 1990s, it was very clear that uh, those many IP addresses uh, would not be uh, sufficient because it is not about an IP being used by a single user. It is about an IP being used by a single device. And it was very clear so soon enough that a single person can uh, would need or would uh, require multiple devices. So in our day-to-day -day life, we are we at an individual level, we uh, carry phone, we connect our laptops to VPN, uh, we have a number of devices. So each and every device at a, any point would uh, have at least two to three IP addresses. If you just check about uh, the, the ethernet that you have, uh, you would see the number of IP addresses being consumed at the individual level. Now just uh, extrapolate it to, uh, to a scenario where you are running enterprise level clusters and you would understand that the uh, need of IP address is actually a very uh, a very complex uh, uh, issue and it, it's something that uh, needs to be managed very efficiently. So uh, there are, so this causes IP exhaustion and there are some uh, problems or some challenges that is presented by IP exhaustion. The first is network congestion. Um, now since the IPs are getting exhausted, uh, the pods in the Kubernetes cluster would compete to have the same IP address uh, or compete to have the IP address from the same pool and that might result in network congestion. That might result in uh, potential downtime or maybe service uh, uh, interruptions. Now uh, that can be uh, a resultant factor in uh, network congestion. Then there is security risk if IPs uh, that we are adding uh, uh, or the IP addresses are exhausted. Uh, it can be tempting for the uh, network administrator to reuse the IP address. By reuse, what I mean is, if there was an IP address that was assigned to a pod, uh, the pod gets killed or whatever, the IP gets uh, uh, released to the pool. Now before uh, the, the IP was properly released, it the, the admin ends up using it or assigning it to a new pod. Uh, so that might lead to uh, having the live access to the previous pods uh, sensitive inf information. So that poses uh, like a sensitive, uh, like a security risk. Next is difficulty in scaling. Um, since my pool itself has, for example, 100 IPs and my cluster demands 500 pods or 1000 pods, that definitely would not allow me to do so. So um, if IPs are getting exhausted, my cluster would not scale the way I would uh, want it to be. And then increased complexity, uh, in, in case of um, IP exhaustion, if my pool itself is uh, having less or limited number of IPs, uh, the, it is, the network and admins would be tempted to uh, go for much complex solutions such as NATing or maybe uh, uh, like go for overland networks, such kind of complex solutions. So there are much more challenges by IP exhaustion. So let's see uh, what, what can be done about it. Okay, so this brings us to the uh, uh, to the main topic that because Kubernetes uses by default kube proxy and kube proxy comes with its own limitation, uh, hence there is a need for uh, the Kubernetes itself to adopt open source based CNI plugins. Now there are various third party CNI plugins uh, in the market uh, in in the market space that that uh, approaches FM differently. Uh, so the so let's understand what exactly the uh, limitations of built-in plugins uh, as of as of uh, there is. So there are a couple of plugins, host local and DHCP. So host local plugin assigns IP address from a predefined pool. Uh, this approach is good for a smaller cluster, but once we uh, go at a bigger level, uh, it will surely cause problem. Uh, then uh, DHCP IPM assigns IPs to pod using DHCP IPM plugin. Uh, it can be uh, good enough for a large cluster, but it needs an overhead like a DHCP server. So again, we don't want uh, such an overhead. Now, uh, one of the uh, uh, APM or one of the third party CNI plugin that I have been working on and used is Calico APM. Uh, it is a completely open source uh, plugin and uh, it has uh, certain uh, key features that uh, 
that because of which it is being widely used as one of the uh, uh, most sort of term network plugin. Uh, so it is it uses distributed IPM architecture, uh, meaning uh, for every node there would be a separate and specific IP pool, not not at the cluster level, but at the node level. So this ensures that the IPs can be assigned or allocated to the pods residing on that node very efficiently and uh, uh, quickly. And uh, it doesn't need a centralized server like the DHCP IPM. Uh, since the IPs are allocated at the node level and not the cl cluster level, it uh, doesn't require a centralized server. And uh, if the local pool itself gets exhausted, um, it it uh, it can request for more IPs uh, from a central pool managed by Calico IPM uh, controller it, uh, itself. Next, uh, Calico IPM supports a network uh, using BGP Border Gateway Protocol. Uh, this allows network admins to segment uh, their network into different subnets. Uh, now, this segmentation can come from the request uh, by the application itself uh, or from the uh, maybe there are some security concerns that needs the segmentation. So this allows the ne the network admin to enforce some uh, the, some traffic related policies. Then uh, it also support it has support for network security, um, network security such as uh, policy enforcement and encryption of traffic uh, traffic between ports. So these features ensure that the uh, cluster is compliant with industry standard along with handling the uh, uh, management of IP addresses. Yeah, so that was all about the, uh, the topic. And uh, if you want to check out more about this uh, Calico open source or how Calico approaches IPAM, or if you, if you wish to contribute more to this project, uh, just just uh, check out his GitHub repo. And there is also a program being run uh, by Calico called as Calico Big Cats, uh, where you get to meet the maintainers, the uh, developers on a monthly basis, and you can uh, just just try to understand more about the project and be involved in it at a uh, very deeper level. Uh, so this is the recap. We saw about what uh, uh, CNI is, what IPM is, uh, what plugins exactly are, then what are the current challenges uh, uh, faced or presented by IP exhaustion, how Kubernetes is uh, dealing with uh, IP management and what are its limitation, and what uh, features or what solutions third-party open source plugins uh, such as Calico uh, present. Uh, so yeah, so that was all about it. And uh, I'm Bharat Goswami. I work uh, as a uh, customer enablement engineer at Cloudera. And I also am a Calico community ambassador. And that is my uh, community platform where I regularly uh, write blogs and uh, share my open source stuff. So yeah, thank you. That's it.